and Allah shows your way in the Quran in Surah Al Imran chapter 3 verse 64 in how to do dawah how to convey the message of Islam how to do jihad strive and struggle with the non-Muslims with the Quran Allah says in Surah Al Imran chapter 3 verse 64 Kul ya hilal kitab say O people of the book Ta'ala ila kalimatin sawa in bayna baynakum come to common terms ask us and you which is the first term? Allah na'buda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. Wala nushrika bhi shayyon. That we associate no partners with him. Wala yattakhizabad, dunabad, dan arbaban minun illah. That we erect not among ourselves. Lords and patrons other than Allah. Fain tawallah. If then they turn back. Fakulu shadu. Say ee bear witness. Bianna muslimoon. That we are Muslims bowing our will to Allah. This verse of the Quran shows you a way how to do dawah. Come to common terms as between us and you. Come to commonalities and you can use the same strategy to counter the media when they say Muslims are terrorists, Islam is a religion of terrorism. I'll like to give you an example. After 9-11, in the year 2003, when I went to USA, I landed in Los Angeles. And being a die, I am prepared that they'll be questioning. When I landed in the Los Angeles airport in 2003, I knew I'm a soft target. Cap, beard, coat, tie, looking like a joker. I'm a soft target, I know that. This helps me to dawah. Moment they see me, okay. Go for questioning. So the immigration officer asked me, that why have you come here? I said to receive an award. He asked me, which award? What do you do? I said, I spread truth. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, Speak the truth and truth shall free you. So my job is to speak the truth and spread the truth. I'm a die. So he asked me, that are you a Wahhabi? <laughs> so I told him, you know, Wahhab is the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. I'm Abdul Wahhab. I am a servant of Allah. No, no, what are you? Are you Shia Sunni? I told there is no Shia Sunni in the Quran. I am a Muslim. I told him Allah says in the Quran in Surah Anam chapter 6 verse 159 Anyone who makes sex in the name of Islam Oh Prophet you have nothing to do with them. Islam does not encourage making sex. All these great Ayamas Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi They were great scholars. They came to give us guidance. Not to divide the Muslims, to get them together. Then I was sent to the customs and I'm prepared. When they opened my bag, they found a DVD of mine. Terrorism and Jihad. <laughs> you know, and on that DVD cover there was a gun, a photograph of a gun. So the custom officer asked me, that, do you believe in Jihad? I said, yes. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, believed in Jihad. He said, you should strive and struggle. Even I believe in Jihad, I strive and struggle. He said, no, 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 no. What I mean that do you believe in killing? I said that Jesus Christ said, take the sword and fight in the Gospel of Luke. The Bible talks about killing in the book of Exodus, chapter number 22, verse number 18 to 20 that you should kill. The killing and fighting is also prescribed in the Bible in the book of Exodus, chapter number 32, verse number 27 and 28. It's also mentioned in the book of Numbers, chapter number 31, verse number 1 to 18. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 19, verse number 27. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, Chapter number 22, verse number 36, take the sword and fight. The customer office asked me, sir, sir, can we ask you one more question? So I just phoned my host who was waiting outside that don't worry, I'm just doing dawah here. I quote their scriptures to make them understand Islam. You have it, Allah has given it to us. He's telling us in the Quran, He's given you deen. He said, Li yuzayhirahu ala deen kulli. is to master, overcome and supersede every other deen. 
every other way of life, whether it be Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianism, Communism, every ism, Islam is destined to master them all. Swallow Kari and Kali rule, no mind how many unbelief I might not like it. And he repeats the same formula in the Quran again. And he ends by saying, Wala ukari al mushrikun. Now my husband mushrik might not like it. This is the destiny of the team. And he repeats the same formula again in the Quran three times. He says, Who is the bil huda? He it is who has sent his messenger with guidance. But in the haq and in the religion of truth, do you use hira who will be kulli that it will prevail, overcome and supersede every other deen, bulldoze them all. Waqafatullah. And if his Allah is a witness to this fact, that is going to make his deen to prevail with you or without you. But me human rubbish, I say all of you, you and me, Allah is giving us that opportunity to serve his deen. Do a prophet's God and earn a prophet's reward. Allah has given you the answer, solution to the problem. Help them and by helping them you help yourself. Change them and you change the world. The knowledge of Islam, the knowledge of God will rise from the West. And this nation is hungry. They go for anything. Anything goes here. They worship Sun Myung Moon. They worship Guru Maharaj, Swami Parvupada. They worship the, the Maharishi. They worship Father Divine. They used to worship his dead now. Father Divine. They are, they have the Satan worshipping cult here. Anything, everything. The nation is hungry. He's frustrated. He doesn't know what to do. They see all the food around them. They don't know what to do. Anything that comes across, they grab. What's wrong with you? I said, there's something wrong with you, you Muslim. Two million here. Oh, like emasculated people. Wallah, now you get such inferiority complexes beyond imagination. In this country here, the most advanced country on earth, civilized with all this technology, you are like spineless people. Wallah, spineless Muslims. Most especially I'm talking about those who have come from the East. Whether you are an Arab or a Pakistani or a Bangladeshi or Indonesian, all spineless people. What you have done to me when I came here in 77, what are you doing to me now? You see spineless people, emasculated people, castrated people. You got no spirit, no will, no energy, no militancy. I come in 77 on a lecture tour and I phone from New York to a station further west. Muslim habitation, population. I said, now I'm coming. He says, what will you lecture on? Subject. I says, what the Bible says about Muhammad. It's a very good start. Very easy to get started about comparative religion, like that subject. So right, according to the appointed time and date, I arrived. What have you advertised? They give me a pamphlet, not like this, but small leaf, what you call it, flyer. It says there, a prophet in the Bible. Ahmad Didad will speak on a prophet in the Bible. I said, you understand English, you university students, you monkeys, a prophet. I said, what is a prophet? You know what a means? You don't know. It means any prophet. A means any. It's indefinite article. It means any prophet in the Bible. There are some 75 mentioned here. Any one of those. Are you interested in any prophet in the Bible? Is the Christian interested in any prophet in the Bible? Is the Jew interested in any prophet in the Bible? No. Your inferiority complex. I say, what the Bible, you too terrified to even write those words. Another group, I say, Muhammad the Greatest. When I go there, they advertise Muhammad the Great. Equating my prophet with Alfred the Great, the guy who burned the cake. Or Alexander the Great, the pagan. What's wrong with you sick people? Emasculated. I said, the whole lot of you, I can see, I don't know. But Allah, in His mercy, He says, He says, do not despair. Do not be despair of the mercy of Allah. I would not be Muslim like if I did despair. But I said, there's something wrong with you people. You better wake up. Wallah, it's an opportunity Allah is giving you in this, in this time and age. In this age of technology, Allah has sent you here for reasons just known to you why you are here. But what an opportunity. They are thinking it's making the Christians mouth water when they see you. Look, tonight the people giving you literature is making the mouth water. You expatriate, you come here. This is man, this is good stuff, easy stuff, easy meat. You are easy meat. They don't have to go to Malaysia, Indonesia, Bangladesh to preach. They can preach from their own home place. They can sleep with the wife and children and they can come and preach to you. Language, they don't have to learn your language, you have learned their language. Culturally, you are westernized. From every point of view, 
they feel that you are God sent to them. I said, yes, you are God sent to do a job of work also. Change them! People who can worship anything, everything, why won't they will not accept Allah by the time? Why won't they? The reason is you don't open your mouth. You know why you don't open your mouth? You too terrified. You are suffering from a host of inferiority complex. Get them out of you. Open the Quran. Read the Quran. Let Allah speak to you. <laughs> Allah will be you. Allow His book to touch you, the heart. And inshallah, allow Allah to talk to you. And He's talking to you in the Quran. He's talking to you and me, to every passerby in the street. Let Him talk to you. And you will not be able to sit on your backside doing nothing. Waiting for the other people to come and mess, make a mess of you. To use you as a punching bag. To use you as a doormat. To want to make mess in your head. Is that the wrong? Allah says no. Leave the hero who Allah did. Waqafa billahi shahida. And enough is Allah is a witness to this fact. That is going to make his deen to prevail. It's a privilege Allah is giving you. Take it. Wa akhul ta'wana. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. context and speak to them, the complete misconception is washed away. Come to come in terms, as will ascend you. So it's the duty of every Muslim that he conveys the message of Islam to the non-Muslims. Dawa is farda. But unfortunately today, we Muslims, we give excuses for not doing the job. When we tell them, why don't you do dawa? They say, inshallah, when we get the knowledge, we start doing dawa. The time will never come. If you think you'll wait till you become like Shaykh Dida and then start doing dawah, the time will never come. Our beloved Prophet said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, Balligu anni walo aya. Propagate even if you know one verse. Even if you know one verse about Islam, as long as you know it correctly, you have to do your job. At least the Muslims know there is one God. At least tell that. You know about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the messenger. He's the last and final messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. At least tell that. If they ask you the question, how do you prove it? If you don't know, come back and do your homework. I've given the talk on is the Quran, God's word, proving that it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've given the talk on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the various world religious scriptures. Come home and do your homework. In this way, inshallah, Allah will help you and you'll be able to convey the message of Islam. Some Muslims come and tell me, the brother Zakir, first we want to make the Musalman pakka Musalman. We want to make the Muslims practicing Muslims and then we'll do dawah to the non-Muslims. I say the time will never come. A beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he himself could not convince his own uncle. Do you think you're better than the Prophet? In the farewell pilgrimage, a beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told the Sahabas, there were 110,000 Sahabas, that did I deliver the message to you? And all of them said, Beishak, yes, verily you have done it. The Prophet told them that all those who are present here, deliver the message to those who are not present here. And out of 110,000 Sahaba, more than 100,000 Sahabas, they were buried outside the Arab land. Doing what? Making Muslim pakka Muslim, making Muslims practice Muslims. They went to do Dawah. In Medina, there were Muslims who did not come for the compulsory congregation Salah, did not come for the Juma Salah. The Prophet said he felt like burning their homes. Yet, he sent messengers to the king of Abyssinia, king of Persia, king of Yemen, asking them to accept Islam. He did not say, first I'll make all the Muslim, 100% practicing Muslim, and then do dawah. Doing dawah is fard on every Muslim. It's compulsory. But many of the Muslims tell me that when we start doing dawah to the non-Muslims, they tell us to mind your own business. I tell them, if a non-Muslim tells me to mind my business, I will say, that's what I'm doing. It's the duty of every Muslim to mind other person's business as far as deen is concerned. So by doing dawah, I'm minding my business. That is my business. 
It is the business of every Muslim to mind other person's business as far as deen is concerned. It is fard on every Muslim to convey the message of Islam. And one of the criteria to go to Jannah, as Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al Asr, chapter number 103, verse number 1 to 3, where Allah says, Well, us, inna insan la fikhus, illa lazin amunu, wa amilu salihati, wa tawasaw bil haqq, wa tawasaw bil sabr. By the token of time, man is well in a state of loss, except those who have faith, those who have righteous deeds, those who exhort people to truth, that is to dawah, and those who exhort people to patience and perseverance. For any human being to go to Jannah, minimum four criteria are required. Iman, righteous deeds, dawah, and exhorting people to patience and perseverance. If any one of these are missing, you shall not enter Jannah. You may be a very good Muslim, you may be offering five times salah, you may have gone for hajj, but if you don't do dawah, you shall not enter Jannah. Only dawah is also not sufficient. All four are equally important. Iman, righteous deeds, dawah, and exhorting people to patience and perseverance. If you do not do dawa under normal circumstances, you shall not enter Jannah. If Allah wants to forgive you and put you in Jannah, that's his business. As Allah says in Surah Nisa chapter 4, verse number 116 and verse number 48, that Allah will never forgive the sin of shirk. Any other sin, if he pleases, he may forgive you. So if you don't do dawa and Allah wants to forgive you, that's a different question. But under normal circumstances, according to Surah Al-Asr, if you don't do dawa, you shall not enter Jannah. And especially to those Muslims who are living in a non-Muslim society. It's an awwal fard. It's compulsory for every Muslim to convey the message of Islam to the non-Muslim. And Allah says in the Quran, in no less than three different places, in Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 33, in Surah Fatah, chapter number 48, verse number 28, and Surah Saf, chapter number 61, verse number 9, Allah says, huwa allazi arsala rasul hu bil huda wa din al haqq liyuzhira wa al din kulli wa la qari al mushrikun Allah has sent his messenger with guidance and religion of truth so that it will prevail over all the other religions over all the other isms over all the other ways of life whether it be Christianism whether it be Judaism whether it be Hinduism whether it be Buddhism whether it be communism whether it be atheism Islam is destined to supersede all kulli master them all wa la qari al mushrikun how much the mushrik don't like it. And enough is Allah as a witness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that his deen will prevail, will supersede all the other ways of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require you and me the rubbish that we are. Allah himself is sufficient to make his deen prevail. He does not require you and me the rubbish that we are. He is giving us an opportunity to do a prophet's job and do on a prophet's reward. I would like to end my talk by giving the correction of the glorious Quran from Surah Fusilat. Chapter number 41, verse number 33, which says, Woman Hasunu call a mimman doil a lohi, wa amil soliho, wa call a inna nimin muslimin. Who is better in speech than one who invites to the way of thy Lord, works righteousness, and says that I'm a Muslim? Wa akhir dawan, alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد Uh, my name is Faisal Fahim. I just want to talk about the importance of Dawah in Islam. Uh, the topic is the importance of Dawah. Okay, and it's uh, going to be completely based on Quran and authentic hadiths only. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said to spend one morning or evening in the cause of Allah is better than the world and whatever is in the world. It's in Bukhari. Allah says <coughs> in the Quran, <coughs> excuse me, invite to the way of your Lord with wisdom 
with the divine example with divine revelation and the Quran and fair preaching and argue with them in a way that is better truly your Lord knows best who has gone astray from his path and he is the best aware of those who are guided Al Quran uh, chapter 16 uh, verse 125 Allah says you know if you do Dawah uh, these are the people who are guided and according to Islam if you are guided uh, then you are going to Jannah you are not going to hellfire and Allah also says <coughs> who is better in speech than the one who calls to Allah works righteousness and says I am of those who bow in submission Al Quran uh, 41 verse 33 then um, another one uh, let there arise out of you a group of people inviting to all that is good and joining al maruf example Islamic monotheism and all that Islam uh, orders want to do and forbidding al munkar uh, <coughs> like uh, example uh, polytheism and disbelief <coughs> And all that Islam has forbidden, and uh, and uh, it is they who are successful. Al Quran Surah 3, Al Imran, uh, Ayah verse uh, 104. <coughs> so again, you know, whenever Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says you're guided or you're successful, that means uh, you know, in a way, Allah is telling you you're gonna go to Jannah, you're not gonna go to Hellfire. You know, so if you're lost, that means that means you're going to Jannah. And if you're guided and successful, that means uh, you're in the right path, you're going to Jannah, inshallah. And in the Quran, Allah says, Therefore, listen not to the unbelievers, but strive against them with the utmost strenuousness with the Quran. Uh, 25, uh, chapter 25, verse 52. Prophet Muhammad said, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa If Allah guides a person to you, it is better for you than all that is on earth. Bukhari number 27, 83, and Muslim number 2406. Convey my teachings to the people even if it were a single sentence. Sahih Bukhari, volume number 4, hadith 667. Then, um, then in the Quran it says, uh, Verily those who conceal the clear proofs, evidences, and the guidance which we have sent down after we made it clear for the people in the book, they are the ones cursed by Allah and cursed by the cursors. Al Quran, uh, Surah Al Baqarah, verse 159. So it's basically, you know, uh, once Allah has revealed you the information, and uh, you're hiding it, and you're concealing it, you're not telling others, and you're cursed by Allah. And, okay, where was I? Yeah, in the Quran it says, O oh, oh, you who believe, be you helpers in the cause of Allah. As uh, said Isa, Jesus, uh, son of Mary, to uh, the disciples, who are my helpers in the cause of Allah? The disciples said, they said, uh, we are Allah's helper. We will strive in his cause. Then a group of the children of Israel believed and a group disbelieved. So Allah uh, supported those who believed against their enemy and they became dominant, prevailed, uppermost, etc. Al Quran 61, chapter 61, verse 14. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said whoever guides another uh, to a good deed will get a similar reward to the one who performs it so if you you know guide somebody to if you teach somebody something good and they perform that deed you know whenever he will perform that uh, he will get the reward and plus you will get the similar reward because you showed him that way and it, what is the best way you know and according to Islam it's just Everything Islam teaches is the best way for living in this world for humanity. Okay, let me just go back to my references. Like I said, this entire art, uh, video is based on Quran and Sahih Hadiths, and it's all about references.
Okay. Okay, that was Sahih Muslim, that verse that I just talked. Ah uh, yes, uh, Prophet Muhammad used to use the same spirit to sp uh, Prophet Muhammad used the same spirit to spread the word of God to men. During his last sermon, he said to his companions, "God sent me for all of mankind, so spread my message to all mankind." Ibn Hisham, a reference we just gave. In the last sermon, Qutbah, of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, that you listen to Qutbahs of Imams in the mosque. I'm talking about the Qutbah sermon of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> OP, uh, this is his Qutbah. This is some parts of uh, the Qutbah of the Prophet. O people, lend me an attentive ear. For I know not whether after this year I shall ever be amongst you again. Therefore listen to what I am saying to you very carefully, and take these words to those who would not be present here today. Remember, one day you will appear before Allah and answer your deeds, so beware, do not stray from the path of righteousness after I am gone. O people, no prophet or apostle will come after me, and no new faith will be born. Reason well, therefore, O people, and understand the words which I convey to you. I leave behind me two things, <coughs> uh, the Quran and my example, the Sunnah, and if you follow these, you will never go astray. All those who listen to me shall pass on my words to others and those to others, and may the last ones understand my words better than those who listen to me directly. Be my witness, O Allah, that I have conveyed, my, uh, conveyed your message to your people. So, you know, like, therefore, you know, conveying the message, you know, is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is uh, saying that, uh, you know, keep delivering the message that I have delivered to you, you know, keep conveying the message, you know, like he already said, you know, convey even a single sentence. So, that is basically a very important thing, you know, there will be no more prophets. Allah already sent uh, 134, I'm sorry, 124,000 prophets and messengers. Muhammad, he was the last prophet. So, um, it's our job and it's, it's the duty of the Ummah to continue what our last Prophet did. <coughs> Excuse me. Because there will be no more Prophets after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, you know, we're the best of the Ummah. And in order to be the best of the Ummah, we have to follow our Prophet and continue doing what our Prophet did. And while uh, our Prophet was uh, spreading Islam, the Kufar, the disbelievers, uh, the enemies of Islam, tried to stop him. So, we Muslims should not stop each other from spreading the religion of deen of Allah, but rather we should, you know, encourage other Muslims and do it ourselves, you know, to spread the deen of Allah. Allah sent 124,000 prophets for doing this job, to spread the deen of Allah. So we are the, you know, we are the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad, we are the best of the Ummah. And how are we best? Because we follow our Prophet. And then we should do what our Prophet did and continue, you know, spreading the message to the non-Muslims and invite them to Islam. You know, that is the best way. And even uh, one of the examples in the time of uh, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he asked some sahabas in, in, the, in, the, in a room, like, you know, what is your wish, you know, make a wish. And um, uh, what I remember from that hadith, actually, he, different people were saying, I wish I had a room full of, you know, I, I wish I had a mountain of gold or this and that, so I could, you know, donate it to the poor and give it to the poor. And Umar uh, then they asked, you know, what is your wish? You know, then Umar anhu, he said, my wish, that I wish I had a room full of people so I could send them in the path of Allah. Meaning, what he meant is like, in the 
send, he wish he had a room full of people so he could send them in the path of Allah, meaning he, he wish he could send them to spread the deen of Allah. That's what he meant. You know, when, uh, uh, that, in that time, it was, that, that's what it, it was meant, you know, sending him, them in the path of Allah is to send them in the path of Allah to spread the religion of Allah, spread the deen of Allah all over the world. That's what the Sahabas did, you know, after the death of the Prophet. They traveled the whole world and they tried to convey the message of Islam. So we should do the same thing, you know. We are the best of the Ummah, right? So follow the Sahabas, follow the Prophets. And follow our, you know, the, the what Umar Radiallahu said, you know. So this is, these are the examples of Islam. That's what we should do. Today we have many mosques in the world, you know. And uh, there, it's good that we have mosques, Alhamdulillah. But I think all, most mosques also should do the same thing, you know. They should go out and uh, you know set up tables and give out free Quran and Islamic literatures and brochures to non-Muslims also. So it's good that the mosques, there are so many mosques, Alhamdulillah, but uh, unfortunately they're not doing the dawah. They should do it. I'm not against any mosques. I love mosques. I support them. In the house of Allah, we go to worship there. Uh, we pray there. Uh, but it's they're they're also responsible. They're not doing their job. They should do it. That's all I'm saying. You know. And if they don't do it, then Muslim individuals, you know, we should do it individually and do the same thing. You know, and uh, in America over here, you know, we have uh, like 98% are non-Muslims. So we're only 2%. So this is a golden opportunity for us to go out and convey the message with, you know, fair preaching and wisdom. And uh, yeah, let me just uh, read one more thing. Okay, now I am reading the hadith which states as train, abstain from innovations, for every kind of innovation uh, is a bidah, and every bidah is misguidance, and all misguidance leads to hellfire. <coughs> Sunan Abu Dawud, Kitab uh, Sunnah, Book 40, Hadith number 4590. Allah Almighty states in the Quran, Today I have perfected your deen, religion, for you, and have completed my blessings upon you, and have chosen for you Islam as deen, a complete code of life. Okay, so this is the conclusion. Um, conveying the message, therefore, does not require a high level of scholarship. It is, in fact, a responsibility of each and every Muslim according to his or her ability. Islam is the complete way of life from Allah for all humanity and we must deliver the message to all of humanity. The idea we should not do da'wah to non-Muslims has no evidence from Quran and Sunnah, but rather it is a man-made idea, an innovation of bidah, and every bidah is misguidance and every bidah leads to hellfire. Allah knows the best. So yes, you know, like some Muslims, uh, they you know, say like, no, we don't have to do that to non-Muslims. We have to invite the Muslims only. Mm -hmm. But th this is an innovation. This is completely bidah. It has nothing to do with Quran and Sahih Hadith. It's not the teachings of the Prophet, nor is in the Quran. It's just simply man-made idea. And, and it contradicts with the Quran and Sahih Hadith. You know, even the Sahabas uh, spread uh, the message of Islam, you know, and every Muslim we should do the same thing, you know. So be the messenger of the messenger, you know, be the, be the, you know, follow the Prophet and do what our Prophet did and the Sahaba did. So we should not follow any bidah like this and we should not follow any man-made religions. Because when you add man-made uh, on a system in Islam, you're basically creating a new religion. You're basically trying to change Islam. And then it will become a different religion. It will not be Islam anymore, like the Jews and Christians. Like, you know, they changed their books and they wrote things in them. And they created different religions. So with Muslims, we cannot do that. We have to stick to the Quran and Sahih Hadith. We should not follow any man-made ideas which will contradict with the uh, Quran and Sunnah, which goes against the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ and what says in the Quran. So we should uh, you know, obey the commands of Allah and follow our prophets, you know, obey the Quran and obey, uh, obey the messages of the Quran, the commands of the Quran and obey the Rasul, obey the Prophet. And we should not follow any other human opinions 
which else we, sh we should not do that again uh, to non-muslim this is an innovation it's a bit and it has nothing to do with the, the real islam and uh, thank you so much and uh, my name is Faisal Fahim and uh, please share the video and uh, about if you say how you gonna do that that was very simple every muslim we know the five pillars of islam right tell them that we only believe there is only one god worthy of worship and that is we say allah allah also means god who has no partner no gender doesn't born doesn't die eternal no beginning no end uncreated for forever and uh, we believe uh, Adam, Abraham, Noah, Solomon, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad are just prophets of God and uh, they are made by God and uh, they are not God, prophets are not God and uh, they are made by God so we do not worship anything that is made by God, we worship the creator who made these prophets and we love these prophets because they came uh, to deliver the message of God and they got revelations from God etc. And that is the first pillar, you know, there is only one God and Muhammad is, he's the opponent, is the last prophet. And the second pillar, you know, you tell, you know, we give zakah, I mean, you know, we pray five times a day, you know, salah, is to praise God, you know, is to think about God, you know, reciting the verses of the Quran, and, you know, it is praising God, worshipping God, you know, uh, one of the purpose of life is to worship God, that's what we do, five times a day, and uh, another one is called zakat, you know, we give like 2.5% of our yearly income to the poor people, which is like a command and a must in Islam. If you don't do it, you're gonna be held accountable. You're gonna be sinning. So that is real Islam. And then we fast in the month of Ramadan because you know so many people around the world that do not get to eat food and etc. But that's not the only thing. We do it because Allah has commanded us to fast, and we believe all the prophets fasted. Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, they all did the same thing. Islam is not a new religion. It's the same religion that was uh, all the prophets preached about the same religion. And Islam is the first religion. It's the last religion. Allah is the first. Allah is the last. Islam is the religion for forever. Allah is for forever. And uh, we just believe Muhammad is the last uh, prophet and uh, Quran is the last revelation. And it basically completes the deen of Allah. So that's why we say Islam is a complete religion. And uh, yeah, and uh, I was talking about zakat. And then we do Hajj, you know, uh, you know, I talked about the prayer, the fasting, um, uh, the zakat, and uh, the first pillar, you know, the light, there's no God but Allah, and Muhammad is the prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Hajj, you know, once in a lifetime, every Muslim has to do Hajj. It's like a command of Allah. It's like a, that, that's why we have to do it. It's a must to do it once in a lifetime, and then you, but you have to be physically, mentally, and, and psychologically uh, be able to do it. You have to be mentally. I mean, physically, uh, psychologically, and financially able to do it. Uh, otherwise, you don't have to. These are the requirements. And once in a lifetime, we have to do it. And uh, it's basically, we believe <coughs> uh, the Kaaba, it was first uh, built by uh, Abraham. Then it was, be, uh, no, first it was built by Adam, alayhi salam. Then it was built by Abraham, Ibrahim, alayhi salam. And Prophet Muhammad continued the same thing. And, uh, you know, there is like the, the Kaaba is like a room. It has a door and it could break the wall, people have to fix it. I know we do not worship the Kaaba, it's just a holy place. We just go there and worship God who is up in heaven above his throne. And uh, yeah, that's it. And uh, you know, that, and you know, Jews, Christians, uh, they go to the you know, church and Senega. They don't worship the church and Senega. So Kaaba is just a holy place. We go there and we just we do our thing, rituals there and we worship God who is up in heaven above his throne. Because uh, there was a girl who asked the prophet, no, no, the, uh, the prophet asked that girl, you know, who am I? And uh, he, she said, I, you're the prophet of Allah. And uh, he asked, where is Allah? Uh, she, she said, Allah is above uh, his throne, you know, and uh, she was a slave and the uh, prophet said, you know, free her. And there is also uh, Surah Al-Baqarah in the verse 255, it's called Ayatul Kursi, the verse of the throne. It talks about the verse of Allah. So we believe Allah is not everywhere, Allah is up in heaven above his throne. But Allah's knowledge is everywhere, Allah is all known, all powerful, almighty, and uh, he's uh, in control of everything. And Allah also means God in the Arabic language. If you look into the Arabic Torah Bible, you're going to find the word Allah there because Allah means God. But Allah also has a definition. You look into the Quran, Surah Ikhlas, it basically says, you know, uh, say Allah is only one, you know, there is none like him. He begets not, nor was he begotten. and uh, uh, there's nothing comparable to him. He's eternal. He's absolute. He's basically almighty. These are some definitions of God in Islam, you know. 
So they, these are basic simple things uh, every Muslim should know and uh, we should also deliver the message to both Muslims and non-Muslims. And when we do Tawa to a Muslim, it's basically we're doing Islam, it's not really Dawa. Dawa is invitation, you can only invite an outsider to Islam and that is the real Dawa. And that's what all the Prophet did. And when you tell Muslims to pray or fast or zakah, give zakah, which is a very good thing, you should do it definitely. But it is called isla. Isla meaning repairing. So something is not going right, something is not working properly. You fix that thing, you repair that thing. That is called isla. So we cannot do that to Muslims. Whenever we uh, encourage Muslims to practice Islam, which we must, should do, which we have to do it. And that is not Dawa, that is Isla. We should do it and we have to continue doing it. So Alhamdulillah every brother who is doing that one. But please do not call it Dawa. Dawa means invitation. You can only invite the non-Muslims to Islam. Uh, dawa has to be given to an outsider. You know, invitation can only be given to an outsider. So when you, we use a, a Dawa, it means you are inviting non-Muslims to Islam. When you say Isla, that means you are uh, repairing the Muslims. Uh, fixing the errors of the Muslims that they are doing wrong. So both are parts of Islam, Islam and Dawah, and uh, both must continue. And this is the proper way of um, Islam. Thank you so much and Allah knows the best. Uh, please share this video, give thumbs up, like it, share in Facebook, Twitter, Whatsapp, uh, with your friends, family, uh, whoever you know, you know, share it with the world, share it with everybody, text message people and uh, subscribe to my channel also and thank you so much and assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم Allah, there is no God but He, the living, the self-sustaining. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم no slumber can seize him nor sleep. His are all things in the heavens and on earth. Who can mediate with him except by his permission? يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء. He knows whatever was before them and whatever shall come after them, and they do not encompass anything of his knowledge except as he wills. وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما. His throne extends over the heavens and the earth, and he feels no tiredness in guarding them. وهو العلي العظيم. For he is the high, the supreme. Allah has sent prophets and messengers to speak his words to us, reminding us to worship only him and to show us how to live properly, following his guidance. One day, when he commands, the heavens will split, stars and planets will fall apart, and the world will come to an end. After this, Allah the Almighty will raise us all back to life again, to be judged and rewarded or punished for what we have done. People who worshipped false gods or other things will be very sorry on that day. 
but those who listen to Allah and did good will be the happiest of all. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Islam is a religion of peace, mercy, kindness, forgiveness, sincerity and submission to Allah Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said If Allah guides a person through you it is better for you than all that is on earth Bukhari number 2783 and Muslim number 2406 convey my teachings to the people even if it were a single sentence Sahih Bukhari volume 4 hadith 663 sorry 667 hadith 667 let there be a group of people amongst you inviting to all that is good, enjoy, enjoying Al Maruf, Islamic example, exa Islamic monotheism, and all that Islam orders want to do, and forbidding Al Munkar, polytheism, and disbelief and all that Islam has forbidden and it is they who are successful Al-Quran Surah Al-Imran 3 verse 104 our job is to only convey the message and only Allah can convert them after giving the message, they have their whole life to decide, but our Prophet said convey even a single sentence. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said to spend one morning or evening in the cause of Allah is better than the world and whatever is in it. Bukhari Part 2 First it was part 1, this is part 2. Another method to bring the Muslims to join us to do dawah to non-Muslims like we do, like our Prophet and the Sahabas did dawah to non-Muslims. We have to tell the Muslims the difference between dawah and islah. But both are equally important, we have to tell them the rewards of dawah and how to do dawah. Muslims should trust other Muslims and be united. Muslims should fear Allah, not worry if the disbelievers don't like dawah to them. Allah commanded us to speak to the disbelievers with fair preachings and wisdom in the Quran. Our Prophet said convey even a single sentence. We have to remind the Muslims how all the Prophets and the Sahabas lived, the, for, lived for spreading the religion of Allah. So Muslims need to wake up. Islam is very important, but that doesn't, it does not eliminate dawah to disbelievers. The world has 7 billion people, Muslims are 1.5 billion, so 5.5 billion are not Muslims. So Islam is, so Islam, sorry, hold on, so Islam is good but not enough. We need to go back to our Rasul, Rasul's way, 
we need to go back to our Rasul's way and invite the disbelievers. I wish I could give a khutbah on Fridays about the necessity of Dawah and Islah altogether. Unfortunately, our Imams and mosques totally ignore this topic. We need to go to the mosques and remind them about the importance of Dawah, but most of them don't care much about it. In America, we have like 2% Muslims and 98% disbelievers. This is an opportunity and blessings of Allah that Alhamdulillah, we are here because Allah chose us to be here. We all love Allah, so we tell other Muslims to pray, fast, etc. for the sake of Allah. Nothing happens without the permission of Allah. Allah has blessed us so we are here with 98% non-Muslims. So this is our chance opportunity to do what our Prophet did. The early Muslims, Sahabas, all the Prophets of Allah did and they invited the disbelievers to Islam. And we are Muslims. so. So let's tell others about Islam so we can earn the rewards of Dawah just like the early Muslims earned it for the sake of Allah. How can a Muslim love Allah? How sorry hold on. How can a how, I'm just going back to read that again. Just like the early Muslims earned it for the sake of Allah. How can a Muslim love Allah but are silent when others have so much misunderstanding about the deen of Allah? If we truly love Allah, we, if we truly love our Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, we should prove it to Allah by following the instructions in, of the Quran and Sunnah, which is to speak to the disbelievers with fair preachings and wisdom. And our Prophet commanded us to convey even a single sentence. And Allah is all known. Allah knows the best. We distribute, we distribute free Islamic brochures, books and Quran in the streets. When Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was spreading Islam, the disbelievers tried to silence him. So we should follow the Quran and our Prophet and we should not follow those who are against Dawah. Please visit our Islamic website. Donate, volunteer, share with friends, family, Facebook, Twitter, and others. www.zakatdawahbillionfreequran.com www.zakatdawahbillion billion f r e e free Q U R A N Quran dot C O M dot com. We should give this khutbah in the mosques every Friday and also after Taraweeh, explaining briefly about the rewards of Dawah and how to do Dawah easily. I'm only sharing my idea for the sake of Allah. I hope it will help in spreading the true message. Of spreading this religion of Allah and Allah knows the best sincerely Faisal Fahim Adai of Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Jazakallahu khair for watching this
Muslims need to be killed? It's a confusion. In fact, in reality, it is created by the devil. And sometimes we think we're so pious that those who don't think exactly as we think do not deserve to be living. That is not Islam. That is unacceptable. That is definitely deviation, the height of deviation. Subhanallah, we are passionate to convey to the masses the true message of Rasulullah of tolerance, of hope, of reaching out to people, different people, different faiths, different belongings, different inclinations, reach out even to the enemy in a positive way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open your doors. The problem with us is we don't reach out to people and we feel okay, because this person has hurt me, it's over. It's over. I'm going to make sure that I destroy this and destroy that and do that. What are you talking about? No religion preaches that type of behavior. Remember, you resolve the matter, resolve the problem, talk about it. Make sure that you reach out to people tomorrow. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it very clearly in the Quran. Those Hypocrites and the enemies, the, we're talking here about open, outright enemies. Allah says if they turn, repent, they fulfill their salah, they engage in the good deeds, they automatically become your brethren in faith. They become your brothers in faith. Subhanallah, after a person was my enemy, how can he become my brother? Allah says, yes, he becomes your brother in faith. And this is why Allah says, عَسَى اللَّهُ أَن يَجْعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَ الَّذِينَ عَادَيْتُمْ مِنْهُمْ مَوَدَّهُ وَاللَّهُ قَدِيرٌ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Allah is all capable and all able to create love between you and the one you hate. That's what Allah says. You dislike someone with a passion, your enemy. Allah says, I have the capacity to create love between the two of you. It has happened, it does happen, and it will always happen. Allah says, Wallahu Qadir, Allah is all able. Wallahu Ghafoor Rahim, Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. Look at Abu Sufyan, radiallahu anhu. Look at Khalid ibn al Walid, radiallahu anhu. Inshallah, we will be speaking about the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and their sacrifice. But to be honest, those were enemies of Islam, enemy number one. And what happened? They became related powerfully through the deen and even through marriage. Allahu Akbar. So this is why those who don't look at others with the correct eye have not understood the message of the deen. We are peace-loving, peaceful people who have been spreading the deen in a beautiful way through our character, through reaching out to people, different types of people of different inclinations, they have seen the goodness in the deen through that. And we ask Allah to continue to use us in this positive way, rather than become people who are so negative and so close that even amongst us as Muslimin, if I have two or three differences with you, I immediately call you a person who's going to Jahannam. And without a joke, I've seen it happening. I gave a talk some time back and I made mention of it. Once I was with someone and every little while we pass people, he looks at them and says, Jahannam. Jannam. Jannam, you know? And I'm thinking, hey, relax. Do you own, are you the gatekeeper here of hell or what? <laughs> Subhanallah. You own this hell? May Allah grant us ease. That is the wrong way of looking at people. It, you will never solve matters. You will never be able to resolve the issues that you are trying to resolve. In fact, it shows that you are not serious about helping mankind. It shows that you're not serious. But slowly but surely we need to understand if we love one another for the sake of Allah, we will be able to reach out to one another in a beautiful way. Correct one another in a way that we get each other thinking. We get each other thinking. Today we've spoken of a lot of items. I hope and I pray that you think about it very seriously and deeply. And I've tried to be as respectful as possible. Although I was passionate when it came to the issue of blaming people because I've seen it overtaking us. And it overtakes us with a good name in the sense that in inverted commas, people think, oh, that good man told me something. But if the good man told you something bad, then that is his human weakness or it is his mistake. That's what it is. 
A bad man tells you something good. Subhanallah, it's possible. And a good man tells you something bad. That's also possible. None of us are perfect. Perfection is for Allah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was granted that in terms of the perfection of the message. And even the individual, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We had a perfect individual, perfect example in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As for the rest of us, we will be heading towards perfection the more we turn towards Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we will be drifting further away from perfection the more we drift further away.